Hello there, welcome back to Simon Shed and this time it's a bit of a different video. Uh, I thought I'd keep this as a separate video on how to fix a particular problem with the Cobalt digital point motors. Uh, as regular viewers will know, I've got uh, quite a lot of the, uh, the Cobalt digital point motors, uh, more than a dozen on my layout and I found them to be really good, really reliable and uh, yeah I was really happy with them. However recently um, I've been having a little issue with them so let me tell you what the problem is and how to fix it. So what I've been finding is that sometimes I'll come to the layout and go to operate some of the points and they won't work. For example, uh, this point here is one of the ones that should have just triggered. So if I put it into programming mode, it help if you could see the other side of the switch. So if I pull that switch down, operate it, put it back to run, and lo and behold, You can now hear that it's working again. So this, and in fact all of these in this particular row of points, we've got sort of five in a row here for the fiddle yard. They are working perfectly fine, but for some reason they forgot their DCC address. I've figured out what's causing that, and that is a short circuit on the layout that sort of causes them to reset and uh, and sort of forget the address that uh, is programmed in and you have to program them again now i don't get too many shorts so i haven't really noticed it up until now or certainly hadn't connected the fact that it the addresses were lost with the fact that uh short circuits had happened but now i've connected those two things together it's uh it's becoming more annoying, um, particularly when you factor in the fact that my son is now playing with the layout a lot more and thus is generating a lot more short circuits, <laughs> shall we say. The solution, or so there are multiple solutions, but the solution I'm going to use is 12 volt, uh, essentially car tail light bulbs. Um, so these are 12 volt. Uh, 5 watt, so if you search for <coughs> 380 P21 bulbs then uh, you should find the right thing. And the idea is you wire this in series which is in line with the frog wire coming from the track to the point and this sort of for want of a better word absorbs the uh, spike from the short and stops the uh, short getting to the point motor and resetting everything. So we're going to need the bulbs, Mr. Soldering Iron, and solder. Now I did mention the solution that I'm going to use. The reason I'm using this solution is uh, because it's cheap. I think these worked out at 60 pence each. I can leave the point motors in place so I don't have to start taking things apart and uh, I don't have to do a lot of extra wiring. The other solutions are to run a completely new DCC bus loop and a completely separate uh, DCC bus loop just for the point motors so that it doesn't really matter if there's a short on track that they're not actually connected to the same loop. That's obviously, um, at this point in the journey, you can probably see that starting to rewire everything would be a bit of a pain. The other solution is to try and stop the shorts happening. You cut part of the track and you make a little gap just before the heel 
of the point and you wire that in to the cobalt digital point motor in such a way that the heel is actually dead if you go if you drive a train up the wrong um, sort of leg of the heel now I can't do that here because these points are all joined directly together so there's not enough you need a bit of extra track here that would be the sort of switched zone that would go dead and again it's complicated and of course if you do drop a screwdriver across the track it's not going to prevent uh, those kind of shorts anyway so yeah i'm going with the bulb method but i will link you to a in in the description there's a link to the dcc concepts information sheet on how to wire up the track so that you can't drive a train the wrong right way through a point uh, there's a lot of stuff in there it's absolute gold dust and if you are doing any track or point wiring i would highly recommend looking at that dcc concepts uh, pdf um, I might even do a separate video on that because there's just such a lot of good information in there. So uh, you can see in the background the one I've sort of tested this on already, but this one's next. So we find the frog wire, which is this, goes into the third one along. Annoyingly, I've tidied all these wires up and wrapped them together, which has made this a little bit harder. But if we push up on there so all we're going to do is pretty obvious really we're going to wire the red wire to the side of the bulb just because this wire is attached to the layout i can't move it and soldering it to there is slightly less fiddly while it's attached than soldering it across those and then i'm going to get a short length of wire and solder it across these two bottom uh, contacts and then yeah just plug that uh, back into there and that's it so we've got our wire uh, this is just a bit of green flux and a very faded label because it's very old. This is Car's Speedy Solder. Um, it doesn't really matter for this job, but I use the Car Speedy Solder because it's low melting point. Might as well do it properly. Tin the wires. So we've got one. I think we've got a good contact there. If I manage to solder this on, holding a camera, a soldering iron, a bulb and a wire I'll be mightily impressed but uh, I have to say don't judge my soldering technique on that one because I'm not normally holding so many things wow it <laughs> seems to have done it so I'll just put that back in there and I'll just uh, tuck that uh, probably on the one of the clips like the other one I did um, I guess you could just buy bulb holders and glue them stick them onto the layout somehow that'd be quite neat but uh, there's no stress 
on those wires, no pressure, so it should be okay. So, it still works. Uh, important thing to check is, obviously we've messed with the frog wiring, so if we put a small loco on the frog that would be uh, dead, you can see it moves. In fact, if I, if I move the point slightly, so that the point blade is not contacting, we can prove that the frog is live. There we go, definitely live. And in the interests of science, we're gonna deliberately set it the wrong way, short it out. So I'll take the loco off, reset the controller. And it still works. Success. And you don't actually see the bulb flash. I did try this with a just another bulb I had lying around, which was only a two and a half watt, two point two watt, uh, and that did flash. But then it completely blew the bulb. So uh, it kind of proved the theory, um, but yeah, destroyed the bulb. So obviously this, it's usually. A small amount of current so you wouldn't actually see the bulb flash but yeah it seems to be working fine any problem with now is I've got over a dozen more points to do so uh, yes I'll get on with that uh, but I thought I'd share that with you because I know uh, a lot of you uh, use these cobalt point motors and uh, yeah I thought that might be useful so thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please like the video and uh, subscribe to my channel for more videos. But uh, for now, I'll leave it there. Thanks very much, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>